Have you ever wanted to be more than human? I'm Rusty Ward and I've always been somewhat obsessed with becoming a superhero. For years I've studied relentlessly to determine what powers are possible with the science and technology we have today and what abilities will be within reach tomorrow. On this show I will share these secrets with you, as long as you don't stand in my way. This is Science Friction, where fantasy meets reality and I break down how an ordinary individual like you can attain superhuman abilities. Since Iron Man 3 is coming out, our first episode asks, how do I become Iron Man? Well, what is Iron Man? Other than the genius billionaire playboy philanthropist that is Tony Stark, the Iron Man armor is a flight device, a directed energy offensive weapon, and an incredibly powerful portable energy source. But most notably, Iron Man is an exoskeleton. Technically, exoskeleton means outside the skeleton. And before robotics and advanced engineering came along, it was generally used to refer to the hard protective covering on the outside of insects. Now an exoskeleton is also widely known as a device that augments human performance. Early exoskeletons were cool looking, but entirely impractical. Later in the 2000s, the US military started financing a number of exo programs. Raytheon's XOS looked promising, but had its funding cut off because it was dependent on being tethered to an electric power source. Really, how are you going to fight bad guys if all they have to do is cut the 30-foot cable you're dragging behind you? Another US company called Exo created a different model and sold it to Lockheed Martin to be developed for the military. The Hulk, which stands for Human Universal Load Carrier, has an independent power source and can enable a soldier to carry 200 pounds without exertion. The downside for this EXO is that it greatly limits speed and agility to the point where it's inappropriate for a soldier in the field. Japanese firms have also begun working on their own designs. A company called ActiveLink is creating the Power Loader, an exoskeleton inspired by the one Sigourney Weaver used in Aliens. This is still in development. But another Japanese company already has a model available for use, a company named Cyberdyne. Yes, Cyberdyne the same name as the company from the movie Terminator that created the evil AI that enslaved the human race. And unlike ActiveLink, they claim that their name choice was merely coincidental. But I'd be more likely to believe them if they hadn't named their exoskeleton the Hybrid Assisted Limb, or HAL. Yes, the same name as the evil AI that attempted to kill the entire crew in the film 2001 A Space Odyssey. Does anyone see a pattern? Cyberdyne's HAL 5 is definitely the most promising. It enhances strength while maintaining decent mobility. It's not designed for military applications, but for civilian use, such as assisting home care workers and lifting their elderly patients. The latest model is for rescue workers assisting in disasters similar to Fukushima and is designed with radiation protecting armor. I like where Cyberdyne's going. Just don't name your next suit Megatron. So if you're looking for your own exosuit, you can rent one from Cyberdyne if you live in Japan. You can also join the US military and ask to be equipped with a Hulk. But the military isn't exactly known for taking requests. There's no reason to not be your own Tony Stark. There are some great DIY exos out there, but this might not be an option for everyone. If you're like me and you lack the necessary engineering skills, but have read a lot of comic books, I suggest becoming a lab assistant for one of the leading designers. Then wait for some emergency or disaster where you have no choice but to don the suit and save the day. Once you demonstrate your abilities, they'll recognize that you were meant to wear the suit and let you keep it. At least, that's how it works in comics. The immediate future of exoskeletons is moving away from the giant Robotech-style power loaders and towards smaller form-fitting suits like Batman's armor. The U.S. Department of Defense is funding the Warrior Web, which focuses on enhancing a human's natural strength and preventing injury. Soon, we may be able to carry around our armor in a briefcase, just like Tony. Exo designs are getting smaller because the biggest limitation is the power source. We're capable of the engineering, but we don't have an arc reactor yet. But soon, it will be mine. I mean, the ultimate power source will inevitably benefit civilization as a whole and will be the topic of a future episode. Check out the following videos in the exoskeleton playlist I've created coming up after this video to see some of the latest and greatest exos in action. Some of these include exos that enable paraplegics to walk, proving that sometimes the coolest use for tech isn't giving someone superhuman abilities, but simply human abilities. On the next Science Friction, we're going to learn how to fly. That's right. 
it's time you got your jetpack. Let me know in the comments if you have anything to add about exoskeletons, and be sure to tell me what superpower you want.